Look at all this amazing garbage. You're damn right that garbage, honey. That no good grandson of mine is too old to be playing with toys. Hey, Grandma, no! Or don't you talk back to me, honey child, or else you ain't getting any of my world-famous flapjacks. They're full of sass. Crap! I can't live without your pancakes, but I hate you so much! You don't want to be messing with my sass, boy! The sassometer is up to 11! Mm-hmm! Yo, kid, who's been messing with the sassometer? Hey, look at this disgusting DVD hidden amongst these magical toys. It must be worth millions of pesos. This is a rewritable. Mm-hmm! But I'll give it to you for that can of Ninja Turtles pasta in your pocket! What? I don't have a can of Ninja Turtles pasta in my po- Oh, here it is. Now let me impart some words of wisdom to you from Fat Grandma! A penny earned is a penny in your pocket! Okay, I'll take it. Hey, Allison, look at this disgusting DVD that I got at a yard sale. Wait a second, you've been calling me Allison and not Lupa in these videos? It's called The Time Machine that I found at a yard sale. Oh, I've seen that. That's the one with the albino guy, right? No, it's not the time machine. It's the time machine that I found at a yard sale. I get it. You found it at a yard sale. No, that's the actual full title. The time machine that I found at a yard sale. Want to review it together? Hmm. What would fat grandma do? Snitches get stitches! Let's do it. No. So what is it? It's a movie about a time machine. Someone made it. It's bad. Oh, please, tell me more. If you insist, this movie is put online in the hopes of releasing it on DVD later. I guess it didn't happen for some strange reason. The plot is pretty straightforward. A guy finds a time machine. Now all you have to do is add in mostly green screen and the least charismatic actors in the world and you get the time machine. I found at a yard sale. You got this at a yard sale? No. Well, yes. Review time! Okay, so imagine your favorite movie. Now take out all the interesting parts and extend every other shot way longer than it needs to be. And if it seems like the shot is going to end, don't. That's the formula for this movie. It's a claw! Did you get that it's a clock? <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be plenty of other opportunities to see what a clock is in this movie. Look at this awesome Shrek font. It's so amazing. I can't think of anything else they could have done to improve this. Well, they did put a lot of effort into this. As in none. None at all. It's a preset font in Premiere Pro. Hey look, I recreated it. That was worth it, right? No. Oh man, check out this framing. I like how he goes behind the tree and all that. Don't worry, this is the only part like that. Oh, you weren't supposed to really punch me. <laughs> 50s McDirector's friend is kind of an enigma. It's not clear if this is intended as a period piece from the start, or if the guy is just really into retro stuff and it seems like his part was written for a younger character. His acting method is saying the lines. Excuse me. What is this? That's about it. Not funny, but true. 
Vai, vai, ora! Magical music playing for a really mundane scene. Hmm, where have I seen this before? Mr. Fifties is going to a yard sale on his bike. Look at all this old junk. I guess that old tea set really caught his eye? All guys in their mid-twenties to thirties love old grandma tea sets. This scene plays out almost exactly like the opening of this review, only it sucks because fat grandma isn't in it. Mm -hmm. Why do we keep cutting to fat grandma? Because of her delicious homemade chicken tenders, of course. I don't eat that many chicken tenders, guys. <laughs> Coming, Fat Grandma! What is this? The stuff that dreams are made of. Feel the magic. It looks like it's made of gold. It is. Whoa, it must be worth a fortune. One thing you'll notice is the charisma dripping off the screen. Feel all the powerful emotions being thrown at us. Why are you selling out at a yard sale? It's only for sale to the person who's supposed to have it. Yes, somebody with a lot of money. No, you are the person. Well, I don't have a lot of money. Feel the magic. Shut up, John. The old man at the yard sale, let's just call him Magical Old Man, I found at a yard sale, is selling his time machine and a tea set. I'm pretty sure the tea set teleports you to other dimensions. What's the silver platter do? That gives you a 0.0003% deduction on your taxes. Well, this shot sure looks like shit, but guess what? It's actually one of the better close-ups in the film. <laughs> Sad. How do we know he's a magical old man? I don't know. He just is, because that's the character archetype they're shooting for. I guess. Oh, and he knows how much money is in his pocket. Well, I don't have a lot of money. I'm gonna settle for the $17 you're going to off. And it really doesn't help that we can't understand most of his dialogue. It looks like it's made of gold. It is. Whoa, it must be worth a fortune. You know what I think when a lead in a film makes old wooden rod look like Mr. Charisma? That this is gonna be great! Oh, yeah, that's what I think. Anyway, that is what I think. I didn't know I had $17. I know a lot of things, just as you would. Why would you sell a gold box for $17? Let me tell you something. There isn't enough money in the whole world to buy that. I'm selling it to you because you're the one who's supposed to have it. This Radu in the forest figure must cost fortune. Not so. You see, yes it is an exclusive, but you know, you did those subspecies reviews which created the character of Radu. Those movies thought they created him, but you did really. Because you dressed up as him later with big hands and looked silly. I can't believe you said that! Neither can I. There isn't enough money in the whole world to buy that. I'm selling it to you because you're the one who's supposed to have it. I don't understand. You think the actors had trouble memorizing the dialogue? I don't understand. How can you not understand that? Take 71. Here, let me get a sturdy bag for you to carry it in. We wouldn't want to drop it. Or to fix your fuck-ups, or pick up bitches and hoes, or, you know, whatever. Kick some ass! You think the chosen one would use it for that? <laughs> yeah, he would. Good chosen one, you old fuck. Be careful. Yeah, right. Like, I'm gonna resign myself to death over something completely avoidable. <laughs> I'm dead. Might as well be since I'm not in the movie anymore. <laughs> Wait.
we weren't kidding earlier. Every shot goes on forever over nothing. We see every single step. Even when it's something going on off screen, everything is in real time. Yeah, but here's the genius. Now we know how we got there. If he just started in the house, we would have been confused. So, if you got a hold of a time machine, what would be the first thing you would do? Well, maybe I'd go back in time and see she- Did you say pour yourself a glass of orange juice? What? Now, let us all gaze and wonder at how McFifties drinks the entire glass. Woohoo! Getting ahead of yourself there, Phelan. First, we have to see him get a glass, rummage in the fridge, take out the orange juice, pour it, and then contemplate drinking it. Am I pondering something about the time machine? Or just silently laughing to myself over how much of your time I'm wasting? <laughs> You'll never know. time I was thinking to myself, is he going to finish the juice? And sure enough, he did. That's pretty impressive. For a second, I thought he wouldn't, but then he did. That's something to think about. Right, fat grandma? Y'all want some chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> we'll return to fat grandma and the real Ghostbusters after these messages. By the way, the orange juice scene, that's pretty much this movie in a nutshell. Oh man, is that a time machine with wondrous and unexplained powers? Fuck that noise! Let's focus on something asinine! Thanks, time machine I found at a yard sale, Obama! Hey, Phelan, I found this time Hold machine- Hold on, Allison. I gotta take a shit. Was that funny? Well, comment section says no. What the? He found the Pulp Fiction treasure. What the? So if you're thinking that because they're using that robot voice, it means the time machine's actually going to be able to talk later, well then you're a fucking idiot for having that much faith in this movie. Harsh, but true. You think it also makes toast? Perhaps it was Wendell himself. <laughs> Remember the clock in the opening credits? Well, fuck that clock. They really meant to show us this clock. Feel the wonder as our hero stares blankly at the events unfolding around him, filling him with emotion of some sort. We have yet to determine what. It may be gas. Notice the lack of music and lackluster directing, further driving home the point that no fucks were given at any time. It's a time machine? Get it? GET IT! He's right, there's not enough money in the world to buy this thing. How else would I be able to reset my clock? And then our hero watches the clock blankly as time slips away from him, drastically aging him until he finally succumbs to death. Ugh, <laughs> oh, I'm dead. <laughs> So only a few hours later, he gets it. Maybe.
I soon found that I could move forward or backward in time as fast as I wanted. I could even stop time from my perspective. I found that it was also possible to enter a time value and the machine would move you instantly to the time selected. You're uh, just gonna have to take his word for it, I guess. I had always wondered what the future held for mankind. Notice the uh, sheer star power coming from our lead. I like how he delivers his lines so uh, energetically. A tour de force. And what is he looking at over there? A way out? So I decided to go back to my apartment and pick up the things I thought I would need for my journey into the future. Go back to his apartment? Then where the hell is he now? So he broke into his mother's house or something? Whose orange juice did he just steal? So how does he know what to take with him to the future? Just an overnight bag with what? A spare change of underwear in case he shits himself? Ah, the lovely toilet flushing transitions. He should get that checked out. Pee's not supposed to be green. So if you fell asleep during that, the gist is that 50's McChosen here is going to Hollywood Boulevard to travel 10,000 years into the future or something to see what life is like. Why he needs to go to Hollywood Boulevard, I don't know. And then he teleports into the sun. The end. That was green screened in order to do that effect. That effect that did not require a green screen since it involved no transition of him from the shot. But you know, just covering the entire screen with a giant lens flare is the greatest special effects Marvel ever created. All hail the lens flare. <laughs> One thing this movie does not do is leave you in the dark. They'll show you endless shots of the forest to establish that it's a forest. Did you get that? It's a forest. Of the future. Like a regular forest. Yeah. <laughs> goes on like that. Savor it! It's one of the few times an endless walking scene isn't green screened. It's like this movie is made up of cutscenes from another movie where things actually happen. Oh shut up! Something's happening! Oh. 50s McCheerios finds a stick that growls at him and does nothing else. What the hell was that? This is a groundbreaking discovery. A growling pull. Oh well. Pretty good to me. I love the lack of texture. Ugh. Later, he comes across what you'd obviously find tens of thousands of years into the future. Purple nuns picking berries off of berryless bushes in the forest. Of the future! It's pretty obvious they couldn't get good sound outside, so they just filmed it silently and added in the background noise later. So in order to get the dialogue, they found a compromise. See if you can spot when it changes. Allison, you know what makes for a great close-up shot? Looking directly at the camera? Exactly! It's not weird! <laughs> What's that sound? The alarm! What alarm? Did you go to your monitors? The columns? They're this tall? Yeah. Oh no. Now I'll find both of us. Wow, I'm glad they screened that so the sound would be better! In case you're wondering when Sad Lady is gonna leave the movie, she doesn't. This is our other lead. I don't know how they managed to match 50's McCheerios' lack of charisma so well, but they found the one other person in the world who has never met another human being before. Oh no, Saturn's after us! It's gonna destroy your base! All your base are belong to them. Topical. 
Yeah, but I, I changed it up in the script by making it uh, bass like the sound. No, unless you read it. But... No, good, no! Hold on to your hair awkwardly and run! Now that we've ran over here, we can continue the FMV cutscene. Who are you? My name's Robert. What's your name? Shiba. Shiba? Shiba. Shiba. Yes. I never thought names could get this stupid in the future. I've made a huge mistake. So the stupid Saturn thing is a law enforcer or something, and Grimace here is a slave. Well, I came from the past. Travel here through time. How did you travel through time? I have a machine. Time machine that I use to travel through time. Hey, time mini timers! You can use a time machine to travel in time! Holy shit! Can two people travel at the same time? Yes. Or we'll be spliced in the same person and die horribly. I have no experience to say one or the other. I ran away. Why did you run away? I'm sorry, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I didn't know about your horrible fashion sense. You should die for that. Robert? Yeah? Yeah? Why did you come here? I wanted to see what would happen to the human race. Now you see. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw what it was like for ten people in the woods. I think I got the gist of it. Robert, please take me with you. Are you sure that's what you want? Yes. Can't you see the excitement on her face? Stand close to me. Sorry all your friends have to die. There's not enough room for them on this thing. It's a time machine! Alright, I just didn't want to bring them. Shop again, Grimace! How far are you going to? The sign of an expert editor is to leave at least a couple seconds of blank staring by the actor before they actually begin their dialogue. It's great seeing them look confused before they talk, and while they talk, and after they talk. And if you love them talking in the woods before they left, then you'll love them talking in the woods after they've arrived. Since I'm not a slave anymore, I'm not gonna look like one. I'll be right back. Hey, Allison, I'm gonna wander off in this time period I know nothing about. What a dummy. I'm the smart one. Thank fuck this is in real time. I kept this secret. I hid it until the day I would be free. I made it myself. Ah, so she made that Kmart store-bought outfit in secret and wore it under her nun outfit in the off chance someone took her to a time period where the law enforcers didn't exist? Do you have a mother and a father? Brothers and sisters? I have a mother and a sister. Do you live with them? Nah, we all have our own places. I occasionally go over there to steal orange juice when they're not home. Where will I live? In Grimace's hauled out carcass, you stupid future middle-aged baby! That's mean. Okay, she can live with not dead Grimace then. My mother's gonna be away for a couple months. You can stay at her place till we figure out what to do. It's a time machine! So, everyone knows you're going into the future? No, no one knows. No one even knows I have a time machine. Oh, what about work? What did you tell the people where you work? I'm on vacation. It's a time machine! Every year, I get three weeks where I don't have to work. I had one day a week. She's a slave, but she gets one day off? Well, that's awful nice of them. I bet you like vacation better than work. Hey, Phelan, I bet you like candy more than having your guts ripped out your ass and shoved back down your throat! You read me like a book. I can set the machine to go back to the exact day I left. Oh, did you just realize that? Remember, don't change the shot for long periods of time. It's what keeps things interesting. And don't forget to have them stand there with no stage business so they just look uncomfortable. Their displeasure puts the audience at ease. You know, I can use the time machine to make my vacation as long as I want. Just use it only for good. Experience the same damn woods over and over and over and over again. The future! Whoa. What is it? It's a poorly cut out tree. Oh, I got one of those right over there. Eh, 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 eh. I'm gonna go poop over there. Yeah, 
Damn it, you die. That's too real. It's a spaceship. Come on, I gotta see this. No hurry, though. It didn't crash. It looks like it's been here for some time. Ash didn't crash. She's been here a while. Did we shrink? No, we got bigger. I'm the smart one. <coughs> Awkward. Well, it is now. <coughs> Who does it belong to? Us. Use it only for good. I'm not entirely sure the chosen one should go around stealing other people's ships. We're inside my cat. Oh boy. <coughs> <laughs> I finded them out. Looks like the crew's quarters. They didn't make their beds. No, they must have left in a hurry. They might be in trouble out there. You're right. We gotta steal their ship fast. The light's only around them. It's great. Thanks for standing in front of the flashlight. It helps me see. Really? Where does it go? I'm not sure. We're gonna have to come back later and... Check it out. Hey, check out that door. Where does it go? <laughs> Who cares? My 50 cents tells me it's not that interesting without looking. Let's go over there. Oh boy! The music certainly thinks something exciting is happening. Keep playing that music. Maybe eventually we'll be fooled. What are those? Some kind of cargo containers. You'll have to take our word for it. This looks like it's the control room of the ship. Or it looks like a sink on the wall. Exciting, yeah. Maybe we shouldn't be here. Why not? Whoever owned it abandoned it. It's ours now. Just use it only for good. Ah, oh, sweet! This thing's piloted by a third-party Atari controller. That's mean. What? Why don't we see how to turn it on? Then why don't I see where my lines are. I don't like this. Sit down, please. Yes! That's more like it. That's more like it. That's mean. Well, I guess it's hard for them to get that excited about a stupid green screen and a lame light-up prop they can barely touch for fear of it falling over. Oh, please stop ruining the magic of the spaceship. Ramp up. Of course, I instantly know how to fly this spaceship from the future with nondescript buttons. Feel the magic. So remember how this movie is about a time machine? Yeah. Well, it and everyone in it are about to forget that forever. The self-destruction system has been activated. You must deliver the supplies to the members of the resistance as soon as possible. So this dialogue from the ship here is meant to be exposition for the rest of the movie. Not that you can understand anything that's being said since they decided these sound effects were more important. The gist of it is, they have to do something involving a rebel alliance. Fuck if we know what that is, but it involves walking on green screens a lot. And they do this despite not knowing if this message is new or from years ago. For all they know, the crew and all the people involved are long since dead. How will we know where my line is? How will we know where Damar is? So that's what this is. It's a course set to Damar. Look, the last point here says Damar. If the people need the supplies, we need to take them there. It's not often they release the table read and call it a movie, but there it is. Oh, we're on our way. Yikes, this thing's fast. Once again, You'll have to take our word for it. This movie sure is flying by. Yikes, this thing is slow.
Now get ready for the most emotion these two will show in the whole movie. Wow, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Wow, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Well, it wasn't that fun. No, not really. Will this review ever be fun? Will 50s McCheerios and Grimace ever wake up? Will they ever find signs of life when they themselves don't have any? Will they remember they have a time machine or just fly around on their green screen forever? Will flying outside the atmosphere have a negative effect on Phalus and Lupa? Will Lupa find out Phalus has been an evil clone the whole time? Will Phalus find out? Will Ash find out? Will Ash care? These questions and many others won't be answered in part two of the time machine I found at a yard sale review. Combat character. That's it. What the?